Okay, it is July 12, uh, 2019. Uh, I'm sorry I hadn't made a video in a while because my phone broke. It just, it wasn't cut back on. I had to get it replaced and I hadn't had the thing 45 days yet, so... Uh, but they replaced it, and I got another one. I'm not real impressed. <laughs> you know, they told me, oh, this is the best phone, and this and that, and this and that, and it just, uh, it didn't work very good very long. So, we'll see how long this one lasts. Um, uh, today's the 12th, and there's a tropical storm coming in. Uh coming in I think it's going to hit right there at New Orleans again now New Orleans is a city right by the ocean that is uh, what a hundred or two hundred feet below sea level so they depend on their levees to protect the city and uh, uh, if you're listening to this before this comes in or the day of it please pray for those uh, in New Orleans and those that are in the path of uh, Tropical Storm Barry. I've got a, a good friend of mine. He's a street preacher. We totally disagree on just about everything doctrinally. Ooh, look at them planes. You see that? Them plane right there. But uh, I love him. He's a Christian brother, and uh, his name's uh, Jimmy Miller, and uh, he runs uh, Trumpet of Truth Ministries. He's a street preacher, and he goes down in there in New Orleans, I mean, when they have the gay parades and all that, and he'll stand there and preach the Word of God, so... Uh, if you would uh, remember him and everyone in New Orleans or in the path. It'll be not just New Orleans. It'll be coming up through Alabama and Mississippi and Louisiana. And, uh, there, hopefully there won't be much loss of life, but I'm sure there probably will be some. And it always uh, affects me. I don't, I don't know if uh, you're like this or not, but I really think about the souls that are going to be lost, you know, then, uh, they don't know it, but they're going into eternity. So let's keep them in our prayers. Uh, I remember in uh, 2005 when Katrina hit, uh, and they were letting the trucks in. They were letting us roll, man. And uh, all 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 lanes were going into it. Uh, if you were in a truck, they let you roll right through. Then we got to the uh, city of New Orleans and the liberal bureaucrats were in charge. Now they had in that uh, Superdome thousands and thousands of people dying of thirst. They didn't have water and uh, we had water in our trucks. And they stopped us before we went in there and it became a big traffic jam. They had to go through all the manifest. Anyhow, it was just a mess. Don't put your faith in humans. Uh, if you're not, I'm not exactly a prepper, but I do. You should always be prepared for, you know, 10, 10 days, you know, without power or electricity. Get you some dry food or some canned food and some stored water. And don't depend on the, the government to get it to you because they're not gonna anyhow that's enough about that I just have a burden for those poor folks that are going to be in the path of this storm but I was just going to talk real quick about uh, John chapter 9 now uh, John Matthew presents the king Mark presents the servant and Luke pre presents the Son of Man, and John presents the Son of God. It was John's, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the, what they call the synoptic or similar Gospels, and John's like all on its own. It was written probably in 90 A.D., 
much later than the other uh, books, and its burden was not to the Jew like the others. It was uh, that you must be born again. Anyhow, in John chapter 9 uh, is a beautiful picture of uh, our salvation. Uh, Jesus came up and he, uh, he passed by and he saw that man that was blind from birth. And the uh, disciples said, uh, Lord, is, uh, he's been blind from dirt, uh, birth. Who sinned? Was it him or uh, was it his parents? Assuming that someone had to sin. Just because somebody has a disability, sometimes it's to glorify God. Or to show, uh, and that's what Jesus said, it's not, neither did, his, did he sin or his parents but that the works of God will be manifest in him. So, he stops and he, uh, now of course, a lot of times he would just heal the blind by touching them, but this is a picture of your salvation. You're born of the earth. And Jesus spit on the ground and he made a, of course I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, he made a, a Uh, a spittle is what the King James calls it uh, he, of clay and he, he put it uh, applied it to his eyes and he said now go wash in the uh, go wash in the pool of Siloam and this is a picture of you being born of the flesh and of the water and born of the spirit it's a beautiful picture of you being born again. Because when we were born, we were born blind. We were blind from our birth. And until we met the Lord Jesus Christ, we were blind. We met the Lord and He gave us our sight. Now later in that chapter, they, uh, of course the Pharisees and the, uh, the religious folks of the time, they... they uh, didn't really worry about him being what a great healing that was they were who did this and why did they do this how did they do this he must have done it by the devil and uh, usually when somebody gets truly born again it changes them the man went out and he said hey they said uh, what happened he said all I know is that I was blind and now I see and basically that's my testimony today is uh I met this man, Jesus of Nazareth, and I was blind, but now I see. Can't go back blind now. Uh, we were born again spiritually. Anyway, that's just a little story. John chapter 9, just want to encourage you to get in there and read your books. Uh, the Gospel of John probably the second to the last book written in the New Testament probably the last book in the New Testament was uh, Revelation but there you go a picture of our salvation we were blinded at birth we've been blind since birth and, but if you've ever encountered the Lord and let me tell you this until you do encounter the Lord, you're not going to receive your sight. You're not going to have eternal life because uh, salvation is a man. It's Jesus Christ. He came into this world. He died on a cross. I know I repeat this all the time, but that's all we're here to do is preach the gospel. It's nothing difficult. There's nothing difficult about the gospel. It's a simple message. And uh, why make it difficult? Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of which I was one. And Paul said he was the chief of all sinners. And if you're born and listening to this tape, you're a sinner, friend. And if you're not saved, why aren't you? It's not hard to get saved. You accept the gift that he did at Calvary. Jesus died on the cross, he was buried, and he rose again the third day for our sins. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again 
to receive us unto our own. You ever meet him, you receive the Holy Spirit of God. And once you receive that Spirit of God, it's uh, it'll change you. I'm very leery of people that come in and they make a profession of faith and then they never read their Bible, never uh, go to church again. I mean, I'm sure it's possible that they got saved, but did they really meet somebody or are they just doing what the preacher said? And depending, what are you depending on? He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. All right, that, I know that was a quick one. I sure did miss y'all. I didn't have a chance to even uh, respond to comments or anything. It's not that I'm ignoring you. It is because my phone was broke. But uh, we're taking a load of carpet to Las Vegas. And uh, so... I'll probably do another video tomorrow. But Lord bless you all. Read your Bibles. Be sure to pray without ceasing. Sorry, I'm changing lanes here. And uh, pray for those folks that are in the path of that uh, storm. They're quite possibly will be loss of life. And uh, that, just, that, that, that affects me. So, all right, folks, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'm in Arkansas, by the way, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Until then, Lord bless you very much.